Well, welcome back, everybody. As we start a new semester, there's a lot of students out there that are asking themselves, am I ready for Calc 2? Now, Calculus 2 can vary from institution to institution. The version of Calculus 2 that I've taught dozens and dozens of times has the following topics. So we talk about techniques of integration. We talk about area between curves. We talk about volumes of solids of revolution, including these methods. We talk about arc length and surface area. We talk about parametric equations, curves that are defined parametrically and corresponding calculus ideas. We talk about polar coordinates, sequences, and infinite series. It's, it's tough stuff. So what can you do as a student to maximize your chance at success? Well, you should know the following. So when it comes to algebra at the pre-calc level, you should know how to factor polynomials at least quadratics and cubics. You should know how to find zeros of polynomials. You should know how to deal with rational functions and asymptotes. You should know your exponent rules. This is so, so important. The proper definition of the absolute value. So the absolute value of x is defined as follows. You should know that inside and out. This is a property that students often forget or don't know. The square root of x squared is equal to the absolute value of x. You have to know this. You have to know your graphs and transformations and properties of even and odd functions. So you can check out a website called OpenStax, which has free open source math textbooks, including pre-calculus. It's excellent. So next, let's talk trigonometry. And I want to talk trig, of course, at the level of pre-calculus. You need to be very comfortable with radian measure. You should know the pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 2 right triangle. Sometimes that's referred to in degrees as the 30, 60, 90 right triangle. You should also know the pi over 4, pi over 4, pi over 2 right triangle. The unit circle, I can't stress this enough. Pythagorean identities, double angle formulas, how to solve trig equations, and you should know how to deal with inverse trig functions. You should know graphs of at least arcsine, arctan. You should know for inverse trig functions. You should know the domains and ranges. I mean, you have to know where these functions are defined if you want to use them. And then also in terms of calculus one, you should know everything about the derivative of inverse functions, inverse trig functions. Okay, let's talk calc one. Now, loosely, when I say, what should I know from calc one? Pretty much everything. It might be the case that you won't do related rates or optimization in calc two. Again, that depends on your version of calc two. The version I teach uh, we don't do related rates or optimization in Calc 2, but I use some of those ideas in Calc 3. So you should be very comfortable with limits. Know your limit laws. Know the squeeze theorem. Know how to use L'Hopital's rule and when it applies and when it doesn't apply. Of course, know your derivative rules. Power, quotient, chain, etc. Know how to deal with derivatives of polynomials, exponentials, logs, trig, and inverse trig. You should know how to find critical points, what they are. You should know what the derivative tells you about a function on an open interval. And you should also know what uh, the second derivative tells you about a function on an open interval. You should know how to find the equation of a tangent line. You should know your basic integration rules for all the major functions. 
and the fundamental theorem of calculus part one and part two, as well as integration by substitution. So again, check out OpenStax for their free open source math textbooks, and please review these to maximize your chances uh, success in Calc 2.